Hello, I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay, and what's my account balance? Ah, oh, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I see a yellow-eyed serpent what? and a low APR. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airways of ESPN Radio. 250 plus markets across the United States of America plus Sirius XM, ESPN Radio, Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Let me just stop the presses and stop playing games right now. We're two hours away from the NBA's trading deadline, and let me tell you what's been going on. Isaiah Thomas, Channing Fry, and a protected first-round pick of the Cleveland Cavaliers have been traded to the Los Angeles Lakers for Jordan Clarkson. And Larry Nance Jr., Rodney Hood from the Utah Jazz has just been traded to Cleveland. I'm hearing, and I just called the news desk at ESPN. I got sources in South Beach that tell me Dwayne Wade is about to return to Miami. He's about to rejoin the Miami Heat. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. I really, really don't know what to say. It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk, wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. See, it's days like today where you're happy to do the show in L.A., Cleveland, and various other markets throughout the United States of America, but you're depressed as a native New Yorker because there's absolutely nothing to talk about when it comes to the New York Knicks. Chris Porzingis is gone. You got idiot callers calling up. Complaining about some dude named Hernan Gomez being traded as if we give two cents. And in New York, it doesn't matter. The basketball iconic town that this is. With Rutgers Park, West 4th Street and everything in between. And damn it, they don't have a basketball team that's worth talking about. Los Angeles Lakers don't have that problem. Cleveland Cavaliers don't have that problem. Because if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers... Isaiah Thomas is now gone. Channon Fry, so what? Nice guy. We wish him nothing but the best. And as he joked around on Twitter, when you go 0 for 6, they'll trade your ass. That's a quote from him. I'm not speaking in profanity over the airwaves. It's a quote. The bottom line is this. You're the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's a simple question. Does the addition of Jordan Clarkson, does the addition of Larry Nance Jr., Does the addition of Rodney Hood, does the addition of all those three dudes propel you to the NBA Finals? My answer would be yes. Does it give you a championship? My answer would be hell no. But I got to give credit where credit is due. Credit to Dan Gilbert for allowing it. Credit to Kobe Altman for making it happen. Credit to LeBron James for approving it. These are all good things for Cleveland. These are all good things. Ladies and gentlemen, Clarkson can play. He's not a scrub. He's not somebody that can't get it done. He can come off the bench for you. He can do some point guard, even though he doesn't have a point guard. He's not a point guard. He can play some point for you. He can clearly put the ball in the hole. He's athletic. He's not rife with a bunch of drama. He can get it done for you. If you are Larry Nance Jr., I can't just, I'm, I, I got to admit to you, I'm very, very surprised that Magic Johnson approved letting him go. Now, clearly, you're Magic Johnson, you're maneuvering, because Isaiah Thomas being let go, we got to remember, if he arrives with you with the Lakers, his numbers come off the books at the end of the season. Plus, you get a draft pick. So you got all of that going on. You can't ignore that. But I'm surprised that he let go of Larry Nance Jr. Because Larry Nance Jr., he's youthful. His athleticism is unquestionable. And on top of all of that, 
No drama. He goes out there and he's committed to one thing and one thing only, and that is doing his job. That's it. That's all he cares about. And those are the kind of things that I think you have to pay attention to. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. Those are the things you got to pay attention to. That's just the way I'm looking at things right now. I feel very, very bad for Isaiah Thomas. He's traded yet again, and you sort of knew something was coming down the pipe because last night when LeBron James hit that game, winning shot. Isaiah Thomas went to hug him. LeBron James ran right by him. Not that he did it on purpose or anything like that, but it was just it, it was just telling. I'll just leave it at that. Isaiah Thomas, I feel very, very bad for him because Lord knows how many times he's been traded over the last five years. Lord knows how many times. But what I will tell you is these moves make the Cavs better. It's undeniable. It really, really is. Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. to the Cavs, it's undeniably better than what you had. We can slice and dice it any way we want to. It's undeniable. And then I look at Rodney Hood, and this guy ends up going to the to 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 Cleveland. And oh, by the way, Cleveland. It's a three-team trade, of course, reported by our very own Adrian Wojnarowski. Cavaliers land Utah Jazz guard Rodney Hood and Joe Johnson, as well as Sacramento Kings guard George Hill. In return, the Cavs sent away Derrick Rose and Jay Crowder to Utah. I mean, if you thought Derrick Rose was depressed before, could you imagine how he's going to be now? Derrick Rose don't want to live in no damn Utah. That I can promise you. You don't want to live in no damn Utah. Not to say that there's anything wrong with the city of Utah. It's a fabulous, fabulous city. And I certainly don't mean to imply that. Very clean and nice and all wholesome looking and everything like that. But damn it, that ain't what Derrick Rose particularly wants to do. Then you have to take into consideration. If you're Utah, why would you do something like this? Because Derrick Rose is in the last year, you know, his contract expires at the end of this season. You're Jay Crowder. You pick up a solid play in Jay Crowder. who's only owed over $7 million over the next two seasons. If you're the Lakers, you got Channing Fry. Okay, he's in the last year of his deal at $7.4 million. You got Isaiah Thomas, who's at $6.2 million. That's $13 million that the Lakers just got off their cap. That's how you got to look at this. And I'm saying to you, if you're the Los Angeles Lakers, you didn't do the wrong thing. You didn't do the wrong thing. They're clearly making a move. All of this notion about the Lakers wanting to wait until 2019 to go after some dudes. Think again. You got Clarkson, who's at 12.5 million next season and 13.3 million the year after that. Those numbers are off the Lakers books. 12 and a half and then 13.4. And Larry Nance Jr. With 2.2 million and then 3.3 million. I know Magic Johnson probably didn't want to give away Larry Nance Jr., but if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers, you want that man on your squad. So if you're the Lakers, you're clearly setting the stage to make a splash in free agency this summer. You know what that tells me? The Lakers have been given indications. Somebody's coming to Hollywood. Somebody's coming to La La. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Is it LeBron? Is it Paul George? Who the hell is it? I don't know. But in the summer of 2018, there is no way in hell Magic Johnson is making these moves, clearing cap space before this trading deadline expires for nothing. And it damn sure ain't to wait a year from July. Uh Uh-uh. Something's going on now. Oh, this is percolating, y'all. This is percolating. 888-729-3776 is the number to call up. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. That's straight talk, wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Again, Utah. 
has traded away Rodney Hood. The Cleveland Cavaliers in a three-team deal have acquired Rodney Hood. Joe Johnson from Utah. That's a big-time pickup. Joe Johnson. That's a big-time pickup. So you got Joe Johnson. You got Rodney Hood. And you got a backup point guard in Georgia, or really a starting point guard. This is very interesting, y'all. This is very, very interesting. I must confess. Triple H, say ESPN is the number to call up. Oh, I got more. We just getting started. And by the way, I told y'all, I reported that Dwayne Wade, I'm told, is about to head on back to South Beach. Stick around. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Home Insurance. Get your quote at Progressive.com today. 888-729-3776 is the number to call up. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. You want to know what's going on with these NBA trades? I called in the Dwayne Wade return to Miami. Woj, Adrian Wojnarowski confirmed that, and obviously he's got everything else because he always does, uh, being as great as he is. Uh, just looking at the timeline here, he talked about how the Lakers sent Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance to the Cavaliers. Uh, the Cavaliers sent Isaiah Thomas and Channing Fry to the Lakers for Clarkson and Nance. The Cavaliers also sent this 2018 first round pick in the deal to the Lakers. Uh, the teams were getting on a trade call, all right? Then he goes on. He said Memphis has traded James Ennis to Detroit for Bryce Johnson in the second round pick. Uh, three impactful details on trade for the Lakers. The Los Angeles Lakers will have space for two max contracts in 2018 or 2019, replenish first-round pick in 2018's NBA draft, and gets the Lakers some shooting for the rest of the season with Thomas and Fry. Clarkson and Nance Jr. are not shooters. Channon Fry is definitely a shooter, and Isaiah Thomas, when he gets healthy, can be a shooter. You combine that with... What you're seeing from Kuzma, what you're seeing from Randall, what you're seeing from Lopez and the others, the Lakers clearly lack some shooting, but they cleared some space. They positioned themselves to have enough money for two max contracts this summer. It's not about 2019. It's about 2019 if 2018 doesn't work out. But if 2018 has the potential to work out, the Los Angeles Lakers have enough money for two max contracts. We can't say that about the New York Knicks, can we? I mean, this is the kind of stuff that just ticks me off. I just can't stand it. Everybody's around to do something but the New York Knicks. Why, James Dolan? Why? Why? Never you. We got a Super Bowl parade going on in Philadelphia. We got maneuvers being made everywhere from Cleveland to L.A. We got the Patriots going to the Super Bowl in in Boston. The Celtics are the number one seed in Boston with a guard in Kyrie Irving that you had a chance of getting. And if you didn't have a chance to get him, you had a chance to get Eric Bledsoe. Why, James Dolan? Why? Why? I'm oh, Lord. Oh, God. These damn Knicks. And for those of you spratted around the rest of the country, understand that I love, I'm, I'm a not, I'm a diehard New Yorker. I love my Knicks. But Jesus, it's just depressing to see all of this action. I mean, Utah is in the mix. Utah! I mean, if it wasn't for Carl Malone and John Stockton, the only thing we would know about Utah is that it's snow there and the mountains are pretty. That's and and it's more it's a Mormon state. That's about it. We wouldn't know anything else about Utah. And even they're in the mix. The Sacramento Kings getting Joe Johnson from Utah. He wasn't in Cleveland, went to Sacramento. They're in the mix. But not the New York Knicks. Oh, no, James Dolan. No, not your team. And I say James Dolan because Steve Mills and Scott Perry just got started. I'm not holding them accountable. But it's you, James Dolan. It's you. 
like a damn virus when it comes to this franchise. Everything you touch turns to mush. I mean, damn it. Eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. That's eight eight eight. Say ESP. And also, Cleveland sent the Mon Shumper to form a New York neck. They sent him to Sacramento in a deal too. Utah sent Joe Johnson. Cleveland sent Jay Crowder and Derek Rose to Utah. If you thought Derek Rose was depressed before, Lord have mercy. I don't know how you're gonna feel now. Cleveland also acquired Rodney Hood from Utah and George Hill from Sacramento. So Cleveland basically has four new players. They got Clarkson, they got Larry Nance Jr., they got Rodney Hood, they got George Hill. D. Wade's gone, so his relationship with LeBron James is no longer a distraction to the rest of the team that LeBron just shoved aside because he loved his boy D. Wade so much. Now they can get back to the business of basketball for this stretch run. Let's see how everything unfolds. 888-SAY-ESPN, that's 888-729-3776. Andrew in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Stephen A., how's it going, my brother? Yeah, I'm all right. Go ahead. I mean, we got a good day, Stephen A. There's trades. I know the Knicks. I know the Knicks. But we got a good day. You got work, Stephen A. Trades going down. I'm downtown L.A. Magic's delivering. Rob's delivering. They said they was going to clear cap space. I'm sad to see Larry Nance go. Sad to see uh, Clarkson go. But we got that cap space cleared up. And like you said, Magic doesn't pull this move without some assurances on the side. You know what I'm saying, Stephen A. So it's a good day. It's more of an excuse for you to come out to La La Land, Stephen A. So Hold on, wait a minute. I'm out, I'm out there a lot. And I'll be, I'll be out there all next week. Don't you worry about me in L.A. I'm out in L.A. all the time. Half the time I'm there, I don't even tell y'all. I'm right in town. You see what I'm saying? Because I got to lay low. Because my celebrity is is elevating, is heightening, and all of that other stuff. But I'm not a Hollywood kind of guy. I'm an L.A. kind of guy. Just like I'm a New York kind of guy. But I ain't for the celebrity and stuff. You see what I'm saying? I'm about to work. If you and Manhattan me have beach Stephen A., the drinks are on me next time, Stephen A. Well, I, pre- I appreciate that. But you're going to have to come to L.A. I don't need to go all the way out to Manhattan Beach to have a good time in L.A. Palm trees and the sunshine are everywhere. I do love L.A., I must admit that. It is special. Very, very special. But I'm a native New Yorker, heart and soul, bro. Even when the weather stinks because it's freezing, I still love New York. It's up to me. It's up to me. Let's go to Iz in New Jersey. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Stephen A.? Uh, Talk to me. show every day, man. You're the man. Um, Thank you, man. Go ahead. I just wanted to say... I think it's amazing that all these moves for the Cavs, like, yeah, it makes them better, but it's also about, like you said, fixing that locker room culture. I was watching the game yesterday, and before, like like you said, after LeBron hit the shot, Isaiah couldn't um, couldn't even get a hug. And it looked like it was just, you know, by chance. But if you look at a couple plays before, when LeBron made, um, I forgot, it was a layup off the baseline, Isaiah's there with his arms in the air trying to call for the ball, and he's, like, kicking and screaming because no, nobody's throwing him the ball. So it's like that you could see how he had just like the whole team was ready to get rid of him, just ready to let go, you know? Well, he didn't have it. He didn't have it, man, because, you know, the, the, he's got to recover from that hip injury. Let's not disrespect Isaiah Thomas. We know the brother can play. You know, it's not like he can't play. When he's healthy, he's a miniature dynamo. But, you you know, you, you can't overcome 5 nine, but so much, at least not on the defensive end of the floor. And that's just the reality of the situation. There's no way around that. No, of course. I didn't mean about his game. I just meant in terms of his. I I just feel like he wasn't meshing with that locker room. He was like you, he, you know, he was just. I felt maybe toxic for the locker room. His personality didn't mesh or something. It's not even about him. It's just he didn't fit in there. But um, yeah, man, I appreciate you taking my call. Um, just one more thing, go Johnny's. All right, my man. Yeah, listen. Did you talk about St. John's? The St. John's yes, Storm, Red Storm. Let me tell you yes. something right now. I don't like their overall record, but I do like the fact that I watched. I watched Chris Mullins' team beat Duke. And then I watched them beat Villanova. I like that. I like that. I know you did. I know you did. I do. I like that. I like that. I'm keeping my eyes on on, on the Red Storm. I'm keeping my eyes on them. Appreciate the call, man. Triple Eight, say ESPN. That's the number to call. NBA trading deadline. Almost a how an hour and a half till its expiration. More to come. Stick around. Don't touch that dial. Guess what? 
You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show right here on ESPN Radio. We are focused on the NBA trading deadline, which is one minute, one hour, 25 minutes, and four, three, two, one seconds away from its expiration. The 3 p.m. deadline today for the NBA trading deadline. Already moves have been made. I'll get into that for a second. On a football note, outside of the parade in Philadelphia, where millions are expected to show up in downtown, and it looks like millions are there celebrating the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, breaking news, Jimmy Garoppolo, quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, formerly of the New England Patriots, has agreed to a five-year, $137.5 million contract with the San Francisco 49ers. This is Jimmy Garoppolo, who is undefeated as a starting quarterback, 7-0 and as a starter. In his career, he has started seven games. He has played in a grand total of 23 games. And he just signed for five years, $137.5 million. Okay. What I will tell you is that, uh, on average, it's the largest quarterback and it's the largest contract in the NFL. It's the largest contract in the NFL. What I do like about this is that he did go to San Francisco. They did get an opportunity to see him perform for them and they clearly believe in him. So I got to give credit where credit is due in that regard. And the fact that he's got this money. You know what's sickening about this, though? And I'm looking at my producer, Jonathan Winthrop. You know what's sickening about this? He's actually getting paid more than Tom Brady. So you has been you have been a protege under Tom Brady. And in seven starts, in seven starts, you've gotten more money than Tom Brady. That's unreal. Something's wrong with that picture, but it's the market that we're living in. It's the way of the world right now. It is what it is. Triple eight, say ESPN. It's eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. Just to get back to the trades that have taken place today, the big news is the is the Cleveland Cavaliers and what's going on with them right now. And all you need to know is this: the Cleveland Cavaliers have gotten rid of six players. Isaiah Thomas is a Laker. Channing Fry is a Laker. Iman Shumpert is with the Sacramento Kings. Jay Crowder and Derek Rose are with the Utah Jazz. And Dwayne Wade is back in Miami. And as a side, and, and, and in return, the Cleveland Cavaliers got Larry Nance Jr., Jordan Clarkson, George Hill, and Rodney Hood. George Hill came from Sacramento. Rodney Hood came from Utah. Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. obviously came from the Los Angeles Lakers. On a side note, just as an aside, Dwayne Wade obviously didn't have the greatest relationship in the end with Pat Riley. Uh, from my understanding, uh, they saw one another um, at the funeral of Mr. Hank Thomas. He represented Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and various other uh, players in the NBA. He passed away last week uh, from an illness. His funeral was Friday. I was stuck at uh, Super Bowl week, uh, so I was unable to attend that funeral. Uh, but he was a wonderful, wonderful man, a good person, a fantastic agent. Uh, who represented guys very, very well. I joked on numerous occasions that Chris Bosh should have cooked Thanksgiving dinner for him and went Christmas shopping for him and all of that stuff because when the Miami Heat, all they could offer was $88 million. I'm sorry, when all that anybody else could offer uh Chris Bosh, $88 million, meaning the Houston Rockets specifically. Hank Thomas went back. And got $118 million from Pat Riley, Mickey Harrison, and the Miami Heat. $118 million for a guy that couldn't get more than $88 million from anywhere else. $30 million extra Hank Thomas got for Chris Bosh. Those $100 million contracts Dwayne Wade signed for, Hank Thomas negotiated those deals. He wasn't just an agent, but he was the big brother and father figure to a lot of guys. I knew him personally. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. Absolutely, positively wonderful. My heart goes out to his lovely wife and his family um, and to the NBA agent community. Believe it or not, even though these guys get your money and all of that other stuff, it's a lot of these guys that are really, really good guys that actually genuinely care about the players that they represent. A lot of them do. And they deserve to be credit for that. Anytime you hear about an agent, you're ready to excoriate them and say they're scums of the earth and all of that other stuff. That certainly is not the case with most of them. And it most definitely was not the case with Hank Thomas. 
He was a wonderful agent. He was a wonderful man to all and everyone who knew him. And he's going to be incredibly, incredibly missed. And my heart goes out to his family and my heart goes out to D Wade because D Wade loved that man. He's a good man and we're going to miss him. Triple eight, say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. More to Stephen A. Smith show on ESPN radio with one hour and 19 minutes remaining for the NBA trading deadline. This is where it's at. This is the spot. Don't touch that dial. Stick around. It's Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio in the house with you right before the NBA trading deadline has expired. Congratulations to the Los Angeles Lakers clearing enough cap space to make sure they've got enough space for two max contracts, not just one. In both 2018 and 2019, we'll see what they do with it. The Cleveland Cavaliers with the acquisition of Rodney Hood, with the acquisition of Jordan Clarkson, with the acquisition of Larry Nance Jr., okay, with the acquisition of George Hill, ultimately, as far as I'm concerned, they've done enough to get back to the NBA Finals. Not to win it, but to get back to the NBA Finals. Seems like Dan Gilbert ain't going to let LeBron James have the excuse of a dysfunctional franchise. He's going to say, hey, you got enough pieces. Figure it out. Get it done. So that's something else to take into consideration. Hour number two, at the start of hour number two, Karan Butler, former NBA player, recently announced his retirement. Really good guy. Tough as nails. Used to play for the Washington Wizards, by the way, as well before Gilbert Arenas ruined that franchise, at least for a little while. Karan Butler will be on the show with us to talk about himself and to talk about these NBA trades that have taken place. And of course, the love doctor. We'll be playing y'all. We'll be paying y'all a visit. Obviously sponsored 1 800 Flowers. Valentine's Day approaching. You got folks in the world of sports with love on their mind. They reaching out to the love doctor. You know, the segment I stole from Martin Lawrence. When he did that Love Doctor segment on the show, Martin, which was hilarious. Now get on out of here. I'm the Love Doctor. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But people call up for advice. I ain't talking about myself. Don't look for me to practice what I preach to you. None of your business what I do. But don't mean I can't give damn good advice. I'm going to be on the Steve Harvey show tomorrow morning. I used to do the Strawberry Letters with Steve Harvey. Damn it, he wrote a best-selling book. Some of it was based off the advice I gave. I'm only playing. Steve Harvey's forgotten more than I know. As evidenced by his lovely wife, Marjorie. The man has good taste. Let's just say that. Triple Eight, say ESPN. Let's get back to the calls before Karan Butler and then the love doctor comes on in hour number two. Let's go to Eddie in Georgia. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on, Stephen A.? Thanks for taking my call. Thank you for calling. I got a question for you. Uh, about the trade to the Lakers with Isaiah Thomas, what does this mean for Lonzo Ball? The Lakers are uh, planning to possibly keep Isaiah Thomas after this year, or what's no, going on with that? We know. No, what what happens is you want to improve the shooting uh, because what the, the Achilles heel is that the Lakers is arguably the worst uh, three point shooting team in the league. So that was problematic for them, uh, and they wanted to clear cap space. And not only that, they picked up a, a, a first-round pick from Cleveland. Cleveland's first-round pick, not the one they got from Brooklyn, but the other one that's going to be like the – the 28th, 29th pick in the draft. That's what they, that's what, that's what, uh, the Lakers ultimately have. So you're going to look at Isaiah Thomas, get some minutes and playing and what have you. Uh, you're not worried. You got to remember Isaiah Thomas can fill in some of those minutes that Jordan Clarkson was getting. Uh, but in the end, the, the person who suffers the most is, Cla- is Isaiah Thomas. I mean, this is the guy that averaged 28.9 last year, was looking for his $200 million payday. And what happened? He ultimately gets hurt. He has to miss the Eastern Conference Finals, pretty much all of it. Then he comes back this year, and before he even came back, he got traded from Boston. Then he's in Cleveland, but he can't play the first two to three months of the season, first two and a half months of the season. And then once he's come back, he's not 100% healthy and clearly trying to fit in and is such a defensive liability that Cleveland ultimately moves him, and now he's in L.A. with virtually no shot of getting the money that he covets. And this yeah. is a guy that's been underappreciated throughout his career. We should actually feel very, very sorry for Isaiah Thomas because if there's anybody that has gotten screwed over since last June, it's been Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, and he gave it all for Boston last year. He really did. Yeah, he did. He gave it all. But he got hurt. It's a business. He wasn't 100% healthy. And let's face it, 
you didn't think that he was better than Kyrie when Isaiah Thomas was healthy. So imagine what you're thinking now. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was a good deal then for Boston. Yeah. There you go. Appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. Let's go to Ray Ray in Brooklyn. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Ray Ray. Stephen A. Smith, as always, man, it's an honor to chop up sports with an elite such as yourself, brother. Thank you. Go ahead, my man. Thank you. Uh, Stephen A. Smith, you know, real quick, uh, as far as the Knicks is concerned, you can't really just leave off that Hernan Gomez tra- trade like that and not do nothing else. I almost think like you have to do something else, especially after getting nothing back in I'm return not saying for him. I'm not saying that they don't have to do something else. I'm simply asking you, what can they do? Chris Stapp's Porzingis is down, and even if he was up and playing, you ain't moving him. So what you going to do? What do you have if you're the New York Knicks that anybody wants? Well, I mean, you got to get rid of Q. Q is not a horrible player. Um, you could get rid of Lee. He's not horrible. Try to pick up some draft. Me, personally, I wouldn't mind seeing some assets uh, try to come in, something at least. But my thing as far as Cleveland, even if this is LeBron James last year, right, so let's just say hypothetically speaking, even yeah. if you feel – any time you have LeBron James on your team, you still stack the deck. You bring in what you could bring in because you never know. That may be the last chance at a title. And any time you have LeBron James on your team, you always have a shot at a title. I don't care if this is last season. That's you fair. still give the man what he's won. You give him what he won, get that title, and keep it moving. That's fair. That's fair. I don't disagree with that, Ray Ray. I appreciate the call, man. Thank you. Adrian and Dix Hills, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen A. I uh, just wanted to congrats the Cavs on, on doing some great pickups, uh, obviously make, making some massive I think they moves, did. I think, I think Kobe Altman and Dan Gilbert did a good job here. And LeBron James, because you know he had to approve it to some degree. I think he did a good job here. I think they, could, I think they, they did a good job. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. On, on the flip side, though, I wouldn't be so quick to necessarily congratulate the Lakers on doing such a great job. Granted, they did give, give up all this cap space. But in my big question is, who are these big names they're signing? I mean, if you're looking at the free agent pool, I'm not convinced LeBron is, is, is leaving well, 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 and coming well, well, out there. Again, well, again, we don't know the answer to that question, but here's why it's compelling. Because they have room for two. So because they have room for two, you never know when stars want to package themselves as a couple to join your franchise, and that's what makes it compelling. The fact If they just had enough money for one max contract, which they already did, it's not that big of a deal. It's the fact that they have it enough for two. And you talk about the Lakers, man. You talk about Lala. You know how many brothers want to live in California? I mean, LeBron's got a house out there in the offseason now. This, that's not an accident. I agree, but I, I don't see Paul George leaving OKC either. He's almost, you know, all but committed there. I mean, you're looking at, you know, the free agents there. I'd be interested to see who they could pair, you know, whether it's Marcus Cousins or who have you. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but, but I'm more so skeptical as far as giving up all this cap space and, and not knowing who you're going to bring in there. Well, you, well, again, you get, well, listen, you got, you got to have cap space and you, you got to have cap space to be in the game. You know, you can't win the game. You can't play it. I mean, the fact of the matter is, I don't, I don't have any problem with what Magic Johnson did. You improved your three point shooting. You got rid of some contracts you wanted to get rid of. You didn't want to get rid of Larry Nance, uh, obviously, but at the same time, Brandon Ingram is showing up. Kuzma is special. Uh, Randall is producing off the bench. Uh, if you could get anything from Lonzo Ball, it's all a plus. So that's just the way I look at it. Triple Eight, say ESPN. It's eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. Hour number two up next. Karan Butler, the Love Doctor, of course. And back to your calls about this NBA trading deadline, which ends at three p.m. today Eastern Time. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show weekdays at one p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. I'm a robot vacuum cleaner, so yeah, I got one gig. I suck up dirt, so pardon my inferiority complex about GEICO, who does so much more. Like, not only could they save their customers money on car insurance, but they got fast and friendly claim service, too. And an award-winning mobile app, plus access to licensed agents 24-7. Who am I kidding? I can't even do corners. Uh Uh-oh, choking hazard. (gasps) Popcorn girdles! GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Welcome to our number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio, 250 plus markets across the United States of America. And of course, ESPN Radio, Sirius XM style, Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. We'll get back. 
uh, to stuff about the trading deadline, some of these moves that are taking place. The trading deadline expires at 3 o'clock today, Eastern Standard Time. Love Dr. Spool. Pay a visit to the show as well in approximately 15 minutes or so. But for the moment, it is my honor and privilege to have my next guest on the line with me right now, former first-round pick of the Miami Heat back in 2002, 10th overall, played with Miami, played with the Lakers, played with Washington, played with Dallas and the Clippers. I mean, the list goes on and on. A great, great brother, hardcore player, the tough as nails, the one and only Karan Butler is on the line with me right now. What's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, big bro, man? I love the introduction, man. I know I made it, man, when I got my man Stephen A. giving me an introduction like that. He just dropped out, but he'll be right back. Karan, are you I'm there? right here, baby. There you yes, go. Sir. There you go. How you doing, my man? What's going on? I'm doing good, brother. I said I, I know I made it when I got an introduction like that from the one and <laughs> only Stephen A., brother. Hey, listen, talk to me. I mean, you've, you've announced that you are retiring from the NBA. Every time I see you, you look like you can still play. You're calling it quits. What's going on? Hey, you know what? I, I I always stay in shape. You know, that's, you know, health is wealth. I think that's extremely important. That's a lifestyle. But, you know, this walking away officially from the game, you know, letting it be known because you know how it is, man. Every time you go somewhere and you're training, you're, you're working on your health and staying right, taking care of your temple, people always just assume that you're trying to make a comeback to get into the game. So, you know, I wanted that to be clear that, I take this space that I'm in now on the media side of the field extremely seriously, but at the same time, you know, uh, you know, basketball. I'm I'm in love with my second love now, and my new journey in basketball is no longer the priority as planned. Yeah, I've been seeing you doing some interviews. I I, I gotta watch out for you. You trying to take my job? I gotta watch out for you, Karan no. Butler. I gotta watch out for you. <laughs> I'm adding on to it, bro. I'm adding on to it. We need more uh, of us out there. Some real ones. No question. Karan Butler right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What are you going to miss the most, man? What are you going to miss the most about all these years that you played in the NBA? I, I, I really do feel like just the camaraderie, man. You know, the rise to the gym, you know, uh, you know, preparing for, you know, competition and, you know, going against guys, you know, putting your best effort out there on the floor against someone else and said, letting the chips fall where they may. I think that's, you know, we, I've been programmed to do that for so many years, but now, you know, I'm programmed to do it in a different space. So it's, you know, it's definitely going to be missed. I'm going to miss that locker room camaraderie, but at the same time, you know, I prepared myself, you know, for years for this and, you know, I'm embracing it with open arms. Karan Buller right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let's get right into this, man, because you've seen some of the news. You've seen some of the moves that the Cleveland Cavaliers have made. Six players are gone. Two new play- Four new players are on the squad. The four new players are Rodney Hood out of Utah, George Hill out of Sacramento, uh, Ronald, you know, uh, Clarkson, Jordan Clarkson out of the Lakers, along with Larry Nance Jr. And gone is Derek Rose, Jamie Crowder, Isaiah Thomas, Channing Fry. Uh, I mean, what, what, what's going on here? How, how do you feel about the moves that the Cleveland Cavaliers have made? I, I mean, we, we we always talk about that they need to get younger, and it just looked like they was running to quick, running in quicksand, and the chemistry was extremely off. So now you bring in, you know, more youth and guys that's okay with being, you know, okay in their roles, and you know, a few things happen, and and let's talk about Cleveland first with what happened initially, which. You know, you get rid of guys like Richard Jefferson and guys like that down the stretch and down the bench that really affects the chemistry of the team. You know, mm-hmm. so I thought that was the beginning of the end all be all. And then Kyrie Irving, you know, a bona fide assassin. You take away him, he was the closer of that team, you know, hitting his shot over there in the slot against Golden State to, you know, deliver Cleveland their first NBA title. And then now that is gone. And then you add Isaiah, who's, you know, he was injured, injured. He was hindered at the time, you know, trying to figure out, get, get into the Florida offense. It was just so many things from a chemistry standpoint that wasn't there. And then it has never seemed to click. And then you had all the voices, you had all the noise, you know, and once that start happens, then that's deflating because now that's another issue you got to deal with. Karan, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I have to because I'm I'm interviewing you here. Uh, I'm one of the people that holds LeBron James most accountable, but only for this reason. Kyrie's a superstar, and he didn't want to play with you. That's a problem for me 
Because when you're the superstar of the team, you got to cultivate and nurture and help build a relationship with that with with with, with that supplementary part. Because Kyrie is that dude. Am I wrong for feeling that way? You're not wrong for feeling that way. And this thing about all the guys and all the dynamic duos that've been together, you know, in the past that they left for whatever reasons. You think about you know, Shaq and Kobe and how they could have coexisted and won and continued to win at a major level uh, for for years to come. And, you know, it was something that wasn't right at that time with them. And, you know, today, you know, they, they, they both, like, you know, have they, uh, you know, they, they regrets about the situation. Like, we could have been so much more dominant. Even even still, they, they accomplished so much, but they could have been even so much more better. And then, you know, think about the years to date. Now you talk about Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, what could have been, you know, two of the better players, top five players in this league. If they would have stayed together, what would have happened? So I was just hoping, you know, with LeBron being the, the, the guy that everybody wants to play with, that somehow, some way they could have stayed together and managed that because they had a special chemistry about them together. Mm. You know, it's interesting because at the end of the day, what this comes down to is this. Do you think that in light of everything that's transpired, particularly with today's moves that have been made, with all the damage that was done to Cleveland this year, do you think they fixed their problems now that they've gotten the four plays they got? I, You know what? I don't think they will have chemistry issues or people that feel like it's a, it's a pecking order that needs to be followed because there's, no one with the credentials or, or anything like that that's coming in expecting anything besides being great in their role. Before, you had a lot of expectations on guys that was, you know, MVPs, perennial all-stars, you know, the best. I mean, they was the best thing on their team. Looking for new contracts. You, Looking yeah, for new contracts, you know, it was, yeah. It, 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 it was a lot of things out there that was just, you know, guys just, you know, feeling some type of way about themselves and not thinking about the the team as a whole and and how to get better going forward as a whole. How are you feeling about Houston and what kind of a threat they are to the Golden State Warriors? Do you consider them a big threat, or do you just think that everybody is mincemeat for the Golden State Warriors when it's time? I don't think no one in the Western Conference can beat Golden State in a seven-game series if they're healthy. But if anybody can do it, I would have to say it's the Houston Rockets. And I'm going to be honest with you, no way in hell did I think that Chris Paul and James Harden could cause this after watching him and playing with him, you know, for so long. But he's adjusted his game. Chris Paul is an amazing basketball mind. He sacrificed a lot for the better good of that team and for that chemistry to mesh together from his player usage, his ball handling and everything. And let's face it, they are a problem going forward. They are a problem to be dealt with in the Western Conference. Yeah, but what about Golden State and the fact that toughness is an issue? I mean, you got to put David West out on the court because anytime he's not out there, they look soft as putty. They're clearly incredibly skilled, more skilled than anybody else, and they're marksmen, sniper extra, snipers extraordinaires. But in the end, what it comes down to is that you can you can roughhouse them a little bit, and if you're OKC, that might give you a chance. If you're Houston, to a lesser degree, I think that it, it, it gives you a chance as well. But Houston plays their style, whereas OKC plays a different style. They really do. And, you know, OKC is a problem. You know, they beat them twice this year now and convincingly, you know, one without Carmelo Anthony, you know, uh, going out in the first half. And then the other time, you know, Carmelo had an exceptional night. So I think Russell Westbrook feels some type of way when he plays against them. And if they're healthy, I think the one thing that's going to hinder them is the depth of that team with OKC. But if they can add something by three o'clock trade deadline today, that could put something down that 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 six, seven, eight spot, you know, on that team, on that roster. They could be a force to be reckoned with as well because they definitely have no fear being led by, you know, the young assassin in Russell Westbrook. Karan Butler right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Keep making me proud, bro. Keep doing your thing, man. Congratulations on a great 16-year career. Wish you nothing but the best. And I know you're going to do some damage in this industry as well. Keep grinding. Appreciate you, big bro. I'm following, bro. 100. No doubt. Definitely. We'll talk soon. The one and only Karan Butler right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. The Stephen A. Smith Show is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. You know, couples love to show off what their spouse surprised them with. 
This year, be the one who wins Valentine's with 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order early, you can get 18 pink and red enchanted roses for only $29.99. Valentine's Day is six days away, so don't put this off. Make sure you lock in this offer. Only good while supplies last. To order 18 red and pink enchanted roses for only $29.99, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, and enter pro- promo code SAS. Order today and save at 1-800-Flowers.com, promo code SAS. The Love Doctor makes his appearance on the Stephen A. Smith Show, up next on ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I stole a segment from Martin Lawrence. I never want to take credit. I'm not a thief. Martin Lawrence is one of my favorite all-time comedians. I love guys like Cat Williams and Steve Harvey, all of Bernie Mac was one of my favorite. The great Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, you know, all of them. But I know some of these guys. But I, I don't know Martin Lawrence, but I love his work. I watch him religiously. And one of my favorite all time episodes was the love doctor. When he found out Pam and Tommy was messing with each other. It's hilarious. So I always pay tribute to him by bringing up the love doctor from time to time. And lo and behold, people call because they recognize they heard me on the strawberry letters with Steve Harvey years ago. They hear me giving sound advice. And I always remind people, I ain't talking about myself. I ain't talking about myself. I ain't going to practice what I preach to you. I live my life. But it don't mean I can't give you good advice for yours. And that's why I'm here. So let's get right to it for just this one segment. Reggie in Long Island, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. I'm here. What's going on? Hey, Stephen A. Big time listener, long time fan of yours. Um, Thank you, man. You can call me the love doctor for this segment. You can call me the love doctor for this segment. What's going on? Love, love, love. Well, yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> just going through some issues with my girlfriend and everything. We've been together What's about a year, over a year and stuff. Um, you know, very big argument we got into on Saturday. But, um, you know, it just seems like it's kind of falling off. You know, my birthday is the same week as Valentine's Day. So I'm just trying to figure out what should I do for her. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to interject. I don't want you to give all the details, but what was the argument about, Rich? Um, just something, just something petty and, you know, just words were said and, you know, words mean a lot to people sometimes. And I felt like I kind of overreacted. So, so you overreacted and you spoke to yeah. her in, dare I say, a disrespectful fashion? I wouldn't say a disrespectful fashion, but I felt like I was disrespected by her and I kind of overreacted the situation and I felt like I should have handled it a little bit better than what I did. Okay. Do you love this woman? I love her a lot, yes. Do you believe she loves you a lot? Uh, yes, I do. She goes out her way all the time. I feel like our relationship is 50-50, so... Hold yeah. it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Did you just say she goes out of her way all the time? Yes, she does. Then you must apologize. Richard, you must no, go to her. Done that. Yeah. Okay, you've already done that. You got to do it again. And you got to okay. make sure to remind her how much you love her. And that you're really, really sorry. And not only that, I want you to drop this on her. I want you to tell her, as wrong as you know you were, that's not what's bothering you. What's bothering you is the thought that you hurt her. And you want to make sure that you rectify that and that that won't happen again. That's what I want you to do. Okay. Understand. And then you get, okay. and get, and by the way, and by the way, even though your birthday's around Valentine's Day, it ain't on Valentine's Day, right? No, it's the week of. All right. It's the week of, bro. Remember, that's her day. So it can't be about your birthday. Don't focus on you. Don't focus on your needs and what you want. What you need to do is you got some making up to do. And it's got to be, especially on Valentine's Day. Absolutely. You go and claim your woman, man. You know, you love her. You want her and you want her to know that you want and that you love her and that you feel terrible that you hurt her and you are determined to make amends for that. That is your focus. All right. Thank you so much. Handle your business. Appreciate the call. Jonathan in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. What's going hey, on? How's it going, Stephen A.? Huge fan. Thank so, you. Uh, go ahead. Let me get love right doctors here it. for you, bro. Let's go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. About, sorry, doctor. Uh, Check this out, man. I work. I wake up early. I get home. Usually I clean. I help my girlfriend, like, clean the dishes, like, throwing away the trash, stuff like that. Usually about 7, 8. I get home, like, around 6. So 7, 8, I like relaxing, watching games, watching Sports Center, all that, man. 
So she last time she got extremely pissed off. I'm sorry, mad at me. Mad at me and uh, started telling me, you know what, you just watch games. You just, uh, oh, like, I'm like, yo, yo, first of all, you got to. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not asking you what you responded to her by saying what the bigger question is. If she knows these things about you and she's always known these things about you, Jonathan, why would she suddenly have an issue? There's got to be something more to the story than you're telling me. Just that, because sometimes I don't really like, I mean, I, I sleep in the couch or whatever. And, you know, she's like, yo, come on. Like, like, I like, I love watching games. All right. And all right. Stop, 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 stop right there. Stop right there. How long have you been with this woman? Two years. Do you love her? Of course. We have a baby. Hold, with each other. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Do you, do you, do you want her? Yeah. Does yeah, she love do. hold, hold on, stay with me. I'm getting somewhere. Just answer my questions. Are you sure that she wants and loves you? Is that fair to say? From my point, I think yes, yeah, she does. Okay. So you love her and want her. You know she loves and wants you. You know what I'm hearing from you, Jonathan, about her? What? She's growing dissatisfied with how oh. she's being treated. She's 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 venting. If she's complaining about games, if she's complaining about you falling on the couch, falling asleep on the couch, or whatever the case may be, she is saying that along the way of watching your games and being ingratiated in your sports and all of this stuff, you know what she's saying to you, Jonathan? She is growing dissatisfied. Now, you want a lot of things. You can deal as a man with a lot of things when it comes to a woman. Any man worth his salt will tell you, dissatisfaction is not one of them. In other words, bro, I'm going to give it to you straight. You're not getting the job done. You feel me? Yeah. And what I'm saying to you is if you love this woman and y'all have a child together and all of that stuff, what that says to me is that you might just be taking her a little bit for granted. She got a kid. You love her. She know you home. You ain't going nowhere. She ain't going anywhere. This is your life. All is good. She's a woman, bro. She wants to feel loved. She wants to feel valued. And she certainly doesn't want to take second place to games all the time. So you're going to have to step your game up and start paying more attention to her. Because if you don't, do I need to really articulate for you what the possibilities are? Nah, I already know that, doctor. I already know could what's you, coming. You, Thank you so, so much I, for your advice, man. Handle your business. Handle your business. Appreciate the call. Now get on out of here. I'm the love doctor. <laughs> love doc never fails. That's what Martin Lawrence used to say. Love doc never fails. Back to the NBA trading deadline in a minute. You've been listening live to Stephen A. On ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Sitting there watching the Super Bowl parade with with uh Kelsey, Travis Kelsey brother, Kid Travis Kelsey from the Kansas City Chiefs. Good brother, man. Uh, his brother, Jason Kelsey, is a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. He is dressed up as a genie. At the parade, he is talking entirely too long. I do not know whether he's inebriated or not, but he is cogent. He is clear, and uh, it's kind of funny. Just thought I'd point that out. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show right here on ESPN Radio. There is a trade that went down with the New York Knicks. Just so everybody knows, three-team deal with New York, Denver, and Dallas, where Denver traded away Emmanuel Moutier. He is now a member of the New York Knicks. So, in other words, New York Knicks got Moody. It's so much for Frank Nielakina. But you got you got Emmanuel Moody. Devin Harris goes to Denver. Doug McDermott goes to Dallas. That's what you have going on. I mean, what do you want me to say, John? You want me to act like this is a big deal? I'm so touched. You want me to it's a blockbuster? You want, that's what you want me to do? No. It's not a blockbuster. Not going to move to New York Knicks like this. It's just not going to happen. Moody can play, though. But Denver's got a nice squad up in there. They got some, they got some young thoroughbreds up in there led by Gary Harris. 
Uh, I like them. I like what I'm seeing from Denver. I watched them beat uh, Golden State the other day. Very impressive. We shall see. Let's get back to the calls at 888-729-3776. This 888 Say ESPN, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Protecting your small business is a big deal. Cover what you've worked so hard for. Visit ProgressiveCommercial.com. Let's go to um, Chris in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen A., good afternoon. Just real quick side note. I think that love doctor thing is so funny, man, but I know you take it very seriously, man. <laughs> no, it's funny. I, I, I'm, I just, just, no, I'm just having fun with it. I'm just, <laughs> believe it or not, man, I'm just, don't get me wrong. I give, I give serious <laughs> advice. I give serious right. advice, but it's all in fun right. for me. I love it. It's fun. But go ahead. Yeah, right. Right. All right. Cool. <laughs> Dump the basket real quick. Um, I think the Lakers and Cavs did a, did a, did a good job. Um, on both sides, because I think the Cavs are preparing as if LeBron's going to leave regardless, so they want to get younger. And then hopefully mm-hmm. they can have somebody, one of those young talents they can build around. And obviously mm-hmm. my Lakers bring mm-hmm. Isaiah, but his his contract, from what I understand, it will be off the books as of next year. So we'll have the cap space to do yep. so. But I'm of the mindset, I'm not, I don't want LeBron here only because he's going to come with the drama. He's not somebody we can build around for the future. And I think he's going to try to control things here. Like here's he the part that I, else. here's the part, here's the part that, well, first of all, ain't nobody controlling things as long as Magic Johnson's there. Let's get that out the way right now. That's not going to happen. That's number one. Number two, here's the part about LeBron that people are not appreciating enough of. It's not just his talent. If you're Laker Nation, you've always had somebody that's box office. You need a box office attraction. Could you imagine the buzz that would be circulating around the Staples Center and throughout Tinseltown if LeBron showed up in La La? For the uh, Lakers? Uh, but I don't know, Steve. I, have to, I would have to disagree. You got, cause you got to keep in mind, he would, this is, this is, this is Kobe's house that he would be trying to come in and step into. So yeah, I feel I'm, like he, I feel like he would be playing under more pressure here in LA than he would in Cleveland. Obviously, um, just because of the Staples City and their franchise t- tradition we have. Like, yeah, but here's, here's where you're wrong. You're wrong, Chris. You're wrong. Here's why. Kobe's retired, and there's nothing to take over. Who has it now? Lonzo Ball? That's the issue. That's why I'm not saying LeBron's coming to L.A. I'm saying you'd be a fool not to want him because anything that creates that kind of buzz, Lou Williams is balling. I think he should be an all-star. I'm, ha- I'm happy he got his contract extension from the Clippers. He ain't filling up no seats. Lonzo Ball did it, but now we've recognized he got a long way to go. Kyle Kuzma's a better rookie than him. More consistent, for sure. We got to look uh, at it. But I got to right, run, real, Chris. Hurry up, real quick. One last point, Chris. Oh, oh, hurry up. Okay, real quick. Uh, about D-Way going back to Miami. Do you think in any way, shape, or form that can hinder the growth of the young players they have? No. Nope. Do you think they'll try to defer nope. to him because he's there? No. Nope. Okay. No, nope, because he's a consummate pro, and he's not going to get in the way of winning. What D-Wade wanted to do was be back home. He knows, I've told him for years, he should have never left Miami. He should have never left Miami. Pat Riley mishandled it to some degree. Mickey Harrison and them mishandled it to some degree, but so did D-Wade. They are family. He is back home where he belongs. They reconnected at my friend Henry Thomas' funeral this past weekend. Plus, Pat Riley always had that that mid-level exception waiting for Dwayne Wade. Not mid-level, but it's still the exception. But it was double what the Cavs paid them. He had that waiting for D-Wade since the summertime. It was up to D-Wade to take it. Okay? Okay. But he finally did. So that's what it is. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Clinton, Utah. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Clint. Hey, Stephen A. Thanks for taking the call. Just two points. What is it about Utah, and why don't you guys give any respect to Utah, no matter what happens? And my second point what is it about when players get traded or when they leave Utah? That's when it becomes the headline story of those players like Gordon Hayward, Rodney Hood, et cetera. Well, first of all, Utah is a wonderful city with a wonderful fan base um, and what have you. But marquee free agents ain't looking to go to Utah. It's just not their flavor in the NBA. This ain't the National Hockey League. This is the NBA. Uh, look at the demographics and you'll easily understand why a bunch of, a bunch of brothers ain't looking to go to Utah. It's no disrespect. It's no knock against the wonderful city and the wonderful fan base that it is. But you usually end up in Utah because you got drafted there or on rare cases like Joe Johnson or Carlos Boozer, you'll sign as a free agent. But for the most part, that, that, that's just, that's just how it goes. Uh, so it's, it's that simple. You respect Utah, but at the same time, you don't really, really think about them that much. 
It's just that simple. But Utah, I think, is heading in the right direction. I definitely like the organization, um, and, and I definitely like your coach as well. So I think there's a lot to look forward to. We shall see. Triple eight, say ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Back to close out the show with your calls in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! I got some calls to get. I got some calls to get to for this NBA trading deadline before it expires in 13 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, but I, I got to get to my next caller because he usually only calls me to complain about Belichick and the Patriots. He never calls me to complain about basketball. I'm talking about my man Carlton at Tampa. Go ahead, Carlton. Let me let me let me hear your take on basketball matters. This is a I, rarity. Go ahead, I buddy. I feel like I'm back in New England with a LeBron snow job going on. Okay. <laughs> Every time I turn on my TV and it's about the Cavaliers, I see video of Isaiah Thomas missing a three point uh, shot or. Or turning the ball over, okay? Do you know that Isaiah Thomas, in the 15 games he played for the Cavaliers, the Cavaliers were 7 and 8. In the last seven Cavaliers games, when Isaiah Thomas has not put his basketball shoe on the floor, not played one second, the Cavaliers are 1 and 6. Do you know that in the month of January, LeBron James' three-point shooting percentage is worse than Isaiah Thomas's? Do you know that in the month of January, LeBron James' turnover ratio per minute played is worse than Isaiah Thomas? The only reason Isaiah Thomas is there is because LeBron couldn't get along with Kyrie Irving. Now he can't get along with Isaiah Thomas. Let's see if he can get along with the four new guys that he's got coming on board. Wow. Carlton's watching basketball. I'm very proud of you, Carlton. I'm very proud. Those are all accurate numbers. I'm very Thank proud you. of you. I'm very Thank proud you. of you. Thank you very much. Take it easy, buddy. <laughs> Carlton calling that about some basketball. I like it. I actually like it. I really, really do. Let's go to Miles and Cali. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Miles. Stephen A., first, it's an honor to talk to you. I look up to you and respect you so much as a man, and even more so being a black man myself, mixed black and Mexican. Thank but, you. Yes, sir. But this is just about business and the trade deadline. It takes time for teams to gel. Boston mm-hmm. has Hayward coming back. How do you see Cleveland being better than Boston right now? How are the Cavs better than Boston was I yesterday? Just, I, and then I have a I second just, question I, about I, hold on, hold, hold on. I just think it's depth. I think, I think when you have the best player in the world – uh, even though Kyrie's a superstar, he's not 6'9", 260. And I think that without Gordon Haywood, the Boston Celtics have been incredibly impressive and they defend and they're exceptionally well coached. But the flip side to it is that the accumulation of those bodies, those bigger, longer bodies led by LeBron James come playoff time where there are no back-to-backs and there's rest in between games and those old legs and that age and attrition doesn't quite have the effect that it has during the regular season because you get rest. I think that works to LeBron's advantage. What's your second question real quick? It was about Magic Johnson's goal for the Lakers. Do you think he's trying for the ninth spot, or do you think he's trying for 2019? And how would we tell? Because sometimes they're never really. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think Magic Johnson cares about a playoff spot right now. I think Magic Johnson cares uh, about positioning himself for the 2018 free agency period, where he can have a shot to get two marquee free agents if he wants to do that. Uh, If not, not jeopardize being able to do it for 2019 as well. I think that's his primary objective right now. Appreciate the call. Mike in Jersey. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead. Hey, Stephen. How are you? Hey, All right. Um, go ahead, buddy. Isaiah Thomas. Um, Isaiah Thomas. Um, I know he got traded to the Lakers and he's pretty much a rent player, but based on how poor he's played so far this year, it, it's one, did he come back too early? And two, um, will he have to prove himself that he's able to stay healthy and, and he can put up the yes, numbers? Yes, on like both counts. Yes, on both counts. Yes, he came back. He might have come back. Actually, no. He did not come back a little bit too early. He needed to get back because you ain't going to get your legs under you and you ain't going to get ready to go until you get on the floor. 
That's the reality of the situation. But more importantly than anything else, he absolutely has a lot to prove. It's sad that that's the situation, but it is what it is. The reality is clear. The man is looking to get paid anywhere from 170 to $200 million. Nobody wants to give that to you off for, off for hip surgery unless you prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's something that you can do on a basketball court. Averaging 28.9 last year, you need to be able to do that again. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Brandon in Montana. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Brandon, go ahead, buddy. All right, Brandon. Let's go to T in Philadelphia. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, T? Uh, what's going on, Stephen A? Hey, um, what do you think about um, Isaiah Thomas and uh, fitting into the Philadelphia system? Right? Would that be a good uh, play to go after for us? Well, anything would be anything would be good with the way Markel Fultz is looking right now. But I will tell you, Ben right, Simmons is right. Ben Simmons dominates the ball, and Isaiah Thomas wouldn't have the ball in his hands when he was most effective. He was playing a point guard spot. He was running your offense, and the ball was in his hands. If you've got LeBron in Cleveland or Ben Simmons in Philadelphia, how does that work for you? That's the problem. Okay, uh, quick question: The Eagles. Uh, what's the odds of us keeping um, blank? They're a running back. Uh, him signing back to us. I don't know. I haven't thought about that at all, to be quite honest with you. In the days to weeks to come, I'll focus on that. But right now, the Eagles are the Super Bowl champions with their parade with millions outside. That's what I've been focusing on. I haven't thought about that. But I appreciate the call. Gary in Vancouver, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A. I just had a couple questions for you. First one being, do you think the Raptors have done enough at this trade deadline? Second one being, uh, do you think Isaiah Thomas gets that max contract that he always wanted? Isaiah Thomas is not going to get the max contract that he always wanted, A. And B, have the Raptors done enough? We'll find out once the playoffs begin. The Raptors always look pretty damn good come regular season time. Then the playoffs time come, and then they go up against LeBron, and it happens to be their kryptonite because he's somebody that can match up well against DeMar DeRozan, who's your star player. So it's one of those situations where DeMar DeRozan, who's improved his perimeter shot, is going to really have to his perimeter shot, he's going to really have to step up his game, and Kyle Lowry's going to have to step up his level of production in the postseason. We know they can play. We know what they can do during the regular season. We're waiting to see what they can do come postseason time before we sit up there and think about anything with them. Appreciate the call. Armin in Wisconsin, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hi, Stephen. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Just a quick, uh, I would like to hear your opinion on this. The Kyrie Irving trade uh, that he got sent to Boston and then uh, Thomas to Cleveland, and then now Thomas is out of uh, going to Lakers. How bad of a trade was that for Cleveland? Like, where do you rank that like as one of the worst trades ever? Are you talking about Isaiah Thomas coming to Cleveland or today's trade? Uh, well, today's trade now that Thomas and Kyrie Irving are not even in Cleveland anymore. Like, where do well, you rank this trade? Because they- well, I don't know where to rank it, but it looks pretty bad right now. And the reason why it looks pretty bad, but here's why you here's why it looks pretty bad because you've got little to nothing from Isaiah Thomas because he was injured, and the person that you lost is a superstar guard in Kyrie Irving. That's why it looks so bad. The the problem with that is if Isaiah Thomas is healthy, would we be saying that? We don't know because if he were healthy, there's no way he would look as bad as he has looked. And that's where your problem lies. We got to get on out of here today. I'll be back tomorrow to highlight and crystallize everything that has transpired tonight in Chapel Hill, Duke versus number, uh, number 21, North Carolina. That's always an epic matchup. They're 50 and 50 in their last 100 encounters with two points separating them. That is amazing. Best rivalry in sports as far as I'm concerned, Duke, North Carolina. I'm going to watch that and I'll be back to talk to you about these NBA trade deadline moves. Until then, peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.